Welcome to BSW's Tech Dive. Tech Dive. The birds, the ship. The show goes technically deep into products you care about. <laughs> the new, the old, the newish. So put on your gear, close up the hatch, and prepare to dive. Dive. The birds, the ship. And now, here's John. Thank you and welcome to another edition of Tech Dive. I am John Lynch, Director of Business Development for BSW, Broadcast Supply Worldwide. And you can find us on the web at bswusa.com. We're talking consoles today. Specifically, we're talking Wheatstone and Audio Arts consoles on this show. And I'm going to bring in our special guest from the Wheatstone Company, Jay Tyler. And Jay, the company has come out with a console called Lightning. And I got to ask you, why is this the last analog console anybody would ever buy? Because it does everything. It has every feature that somebody's asked me in the last 24 years of us designing and selling analog consoles. It's got everything, John. You mean other people than me have been making suggestions? <laughs> Absolutely. So for starters, you know, audio arts is synonymous for quality, all right? We still, even with the lightning, 25, 30 years after we brought audio arts back, we use really good switches, broadcast quality faders. The boards are made here in Newburn, North Carolina, 100% manufactured here at Wheatstone. So we use thick steel. We've given you beautiful LED meters on it. Um, it's modular, so you got input panels, you've got output panels, things like soda spills happen. So people have got to be able to work on these things. So the, the fundamentals that we've built Audio Arts on are all into the lightning. Then what we did is we just upped the feature count, John. Now, and, let's talk about some of those features that you've done that weren't necessarily standard in previous console models that make it more flexible for people to be able to use Lightning today. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually put it back on you as the console expert, because when I first started in this business, you were just coming off, you know, being a DJ and a disc jockey. So I'm going to start with an yeah, obvious that was, one for you. Remember, that was another century. <laughs> I know, but so you remember the AB switch you used oh, to yeah. use? Absolutely. 90% of the manufacturers would have a, a single button above the channel and it would light if it was maybe an A or it would light in B, but the jocks yeah. would sit up there and just push that button. Mm -hmm. um, we gave you an individual AB switch on this board. What a guy. That way, <laughs> there is no question what is on. Whatever button yeah. is illuminated with an LED, it's in that mode. Well, um, and that's important to a user like me. If it's not obvious, I'm in, I'm going to create trouble. So that's why I like it when it's obvious, it's on. There you go. Four stereo buses. Okay. Okay. So that gives you program audition, aux and offline bus. So plenty of extra buses for program, recording, simulcasting. So we've got one mainframe for the lightning. It comes with 12 or 16 channels. All right. We also give you a quad mic preamp in there. So depending on, you know, your show, you may have four microphones in the morning, but the rest of the afternoon you have a single guy or gal in the studio. You can still use the B-sides of those stereo inputs as a stereo source for like Adobe Audition, Vox Pro, anything like that. Um, one thing that these analog consoles were always difficult at doing, multiple callers. So in the Lightning, we actually give you a super phone module, which so you've got a dual fader module with Q, and that allows you to do caller conferencing with two callers. You want to have a remote dial in on fader two and a telephone call on fader one and have a three-way conversation. With the buses, the four buses, and that dual fader phone module, it gives you the ability to do that conferencing, which was pretty difficult back in the, the original analog days. If you didn't have a really good board op that knew how to subtract people out of mix minus, um, the phone module just makes it really easy, automatically creates a mix minus from what it's assigned to. So it's like the simple phone back in the R60 days. In my day, it wasn't a matter of having a good board op because I was the board op. So there you go. <laughs> so this is a big yeah, so right there. Now we also have, but you know, we call the 
it's an analog console. It's an analog yes. mix engine, mm -hmm. but it's almost a hybrid board, John. The Lightning, right. and we call it a hybrid here at Wheatstone because it's got some digital components in it, and it's got three digital components. One is an actual AES output. So for the guys that want to drive the digital transmitters, they want to have that pure digital chain, well, it's got an AES output on it. So you can take any of the buses, select those to an AES output, so you've got an actual AES-3 output. Um, another digital option for it, and it's not option, it's standard, is the two USB ports. USB ports have been a savior. All of our bigger AOIP systems require drivers, somebody loading software in, getting keys, initializing stuff. USB audio is great. Whether it's your iPhone, your Android phone, your laptop, your tower computer, these things all have USB interfaces on them. So you can bring two different devices into the Lightning really simple easy no sound cards required no drivers it's a plug and play it's a plug and play technology so the usbs are great and then the third bit of tech in this john and everybody loves is bluetooth mm -hmm. sure and earlier today when i was playing with the lightning here i walked in with my android phone i pushed the button it said lightning 35 i hit pair I started playing my alternative 90s rock and it was there <laughs> so you can use it as a play out device you can also use it as a hybrid. The, the USB and the Bluetooth are bi-directional. So it gives you the ability to, to do that and record audio, send audio. So it works great for any mid small market radio station may not have a full-time engineer. You grab this audio arts lightning, plug it in, wire it up. It's all RJ 45s. We do give you a few Phoenix connectors for uh, things like your GPI, GPO and your mic inputs. Sure. But really it's probably one of the last analog consoles you're going to buy because it's going to last you 10 or 15 years. And who knows what we're going to be doing in 10 <laughs> or 15 years. Well, that's always something that I've been, it's been a hallmark of Wheatstone and audio arts. Your stuff lasts. Oh, you it does. And you know one of the reasons why, John? I just happen to have a little prop right here. Very good. Look at that. What a guy. Red remote power supply. So here's the power supply for the Lightning. You remember when you were younger, every console you ever bought came with a big power supply that was mounted in a rack. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we still do that with the Lightning. So, And that's half of it. When you talk about reliability and broadcast, John, most of it is the power supplies. And Wheatstone designs and manufactures every supply for the equipment. We just don't go through a catalog and find a supply that's going to do a plus and minus voltage we want. We actually build them from the ground up, and that's why we have such good reliability out there in the field. And what I like about from visiting your facility on multiple times, one end, here's all this raw material, and at the other end, here's these finished products, and it all comes together in that building. You do it all right there in New Bern, North Carolina. <laughs> Every day, repeat, that's what we do. We invent, we design, we manufacture it, we test it, ship it, and support it, all from our little factory here in New Bern. Lightning can be a 12 or a 16. What's the decision factor for a customer to decide which way they should go? Well, nobody wants to give anything up. So if somebody traditionally had a 20 fader console, I know a 16 is going to work for them and okay. the board ops are probably going to be copacetic with that. You know, if you had a 16 fader console, yeah, you can probably use a 12, but remember these things are modular. So you can start with a 12 today. You got the 16 frame. You decide to put a sports show on or a new talk studio. You just drop an extra panel in and now we got, we're back up to a 16 channel console. And that's what you get with Wheatstone audio arts and BSW, Broadcast Supply Worldwide. Our topic today has been the Lightning Console. That's all you need to know on the part number. Just look up Lightning on the BSW website, and you'll see some other videos there on that product. But it's, as Jay said, the last analog console you'll likely ever purchase. Jay, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, John. And this has been another edition of Tech Dive. I'm John Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Turn out the